process basically is uh, what really intrigues me, you know. It's like every pot's different. Uh, like, you know, some pots, that's one of the things about making pots, you can't go fast. Because if you go too fast, then it dries too fast, and they have a tendency to crack and do things that, that aren't welcome. Let's see if I can make something here. They can uh, go into the kiln without any cracks, but come out later with cracked because you don't realize how fast they've dried or whatever. So always try to slow that down, especially in a uh, drought, heat wave kind of thing as, you know, as we had like last summer. Now I feel fortunate because, uh, you know, even just around here in A, there's not more, more than three or four potters, you know. Uh, maybe there's a hundred in Oklahoma, so uh, you, it's a special kind of type of calling, I guess, as you could say, by uh, you know, being able to do something that unique. Not many people, you know, can pursue that. And uh, I've, over the years, I've worked my way through, and uh, I don't make tons of money or anything, but, you know, you feel full by creating objects that, there were nothing more than just uh, basically mud or clay. It's a, a you know good soul fulfilling that you can do that. You know, so uh, like I said, I I don't. I have a lot of ex you know extremely expensive habits or things that I you know have to deal with, so I uh, I get to uh, make a smaller amount of money and still enjoy you know get to do, which is great you know. kind of off the grid, you know, to some extent when it comes to a lot of things that really don't, you know, you can only do so much. People have hundreds of channels and you can only watch one at a time. So, therefore, it's, you know, life's that way. There's so many different directions that you can go that a lot of people get um, overwhelmed, really. Ever since the first grade, I had a great art teacher in the first grade. She likes the one that uh, inspired me to go on with my art. So I automatically started taking uh, art classes in junior high and high school, and then just kind of progressive. I took a clay class as I was a freshman at East Central, um, and of course fell in love with it. So uh, uh, after I graduated from East Central, I decided to go uh, to Mexico to, to art school, graduate school down there, and um, got to travel. Uh, it's a whole different, different world down there. So I got to see a lot of local potteries and, and uh, uh, worked at the school there. I actually was a graduate assistant. I worked my way through by helping my instructor mix clay and fire the kilns and do a lot of the uh, basic kind of work that's involved there. You know, the more you do it, the actually the easier it gets. It's just like anything else. You know, when you when you first start doing a discipline like that, the more you do it, it's just like riding a bicycle or whatever. It's like the more you do, the it seems like the simpler it gets, and the more you learn as you work. It's just uh, the basic kind of thing. It's just Mother Earth. You know, it's like straight from the ground. Usually they don't have to process it much. It's like, it's like um, just such a natural media to work with. Uh, and it's the kind of media that you can uh, flex. You don't have to drill, carve, cut, you know. It's, it's more like a manipulation there, kind of you just twist it, turn it. So easy to, uh, to work with.
it's just kind of the simple rhythms of life, you know, basically. So being out here in nature and stuff, you're in tune with it. And so it has a tendency to slow you down, get you more in a peaceful kind of zone there, kind of. And, uh, you know, there's so much hurry blurry in the world that you can completely separate yourself from a lot of that stuff that doesn't really matter in the long run, you know. So uh, you can work on a computer all day long and, you know, it's just a bunch of uh, keyboards and paper stuff. But when you make a pot, you can actually hold that finished item and feel it and know what, what, what it feels like and where you were at that point in time, kind of, as you, as you finish pieces and have, uh, you know, the rhythm kind of, uh, of working, you know, in a, in a um, simple and peaceful kind of way. So there's no pressure, you know. Sometimes I work, you know, like in, uh, with an idea in mind, whatever there. But most of the time, I just um, let the clay determine what what happens. Kind of, you know, if the pot gets soft or something, then sometimes the shape might be totally different than what you originally think or whatever. So a lot of times, uh, the clay's in control. If you've had, you know, rest and stuff, if you're fresh, then uh, your pots tend to be more fresh. Every day I try to do a certain amount just uh, for my own uh, well-being, kind of, as you might say. It's calming, you know, it's, uh, it just relieves all your stress. So, uh, you know, as you work, you, you get into a pattern and you get into a working rhythm, kind of, and it's similar to nature. You know, everything doesn't happen at once. You know, it takes a while for that progression, kind of, to, to get there. So, at the end, you get a reward of, like, a accomplishment, of course and a sense of uh, being able to work with kind of natural elements there, natural materials. I know the objects that I make, the ones that I, uh, uh, the ones that I like the best, I guess, are the ones I use all the time. And, you know, it might be my coffee mug in the morning or it might be the you know, a teapot that I serve tea out of or whatever. Here. So it's the functional aspect of it that I like a lot too, because it blends with uh, what you do daily in daily life, kind of. So, you know, there's pots that I eat my cereal out of. There's, there's things that I drink tea and all that, you know, top, that type of thing there. So uh, pots that I use frequently are the, my favorite pots.